until some years later uh, when he was asking for another job. And the guy I talked to says, only if you tell me what I saw. And he admitted that, yes, it was, in fact, uh, one of our own craft, but was made completely from ET technology. Okay, now we're going to have to jump into a break. We'll be back in two and a half minutes. You're listening to Preston Demet. You've got uh, James Crispum out there, and you got me, Gary, on Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark. We're going to break now for the radio stations. We'll be back in two and a half. Do you have a paranormal story you want to share on Night Dreams Talk Radio? You could be a guest. Email us at nightdreamstalkradio at gmail.com. Não perde tempo escolhendo uma roupa, porque no fim eu sei que vou tirar. Fala tchau pro seu batom na boca E fala oi pra quem te faz pirar Se você já tá com a mesma sensação Pode vir, gente, que eu tô um bugão Tá descontrolada toda essa cara E não para porque a coisa ficou mara Vou te ganhar no cansaço No cansaço, no cansaço Vamos fazer um regaço, um regaço, um regaço Bolarinha dos amassos, amassos, amassos Vamos fazer um regaço, um regaço, um regaço Broadcasting Building the roof of Broadcasting Building, New York City. The bells you hear are ringing to warn the people to evacuate the city as Martians approach. Estimated in the last two hours, three million people have moved out along the roads to the north. Hutchison River Parkway is still kept open for motor traffic. Avoid bridges to Long Island, hopelessly jammed. All communication with Jersey Shore closed ten minutes ago. You're listening to my friend Gary Anderson on My Dreams Talk Radio, the best in paranormal radio. Hey, John, maybe not the best, but we're definitely on the radio with our great guest, Preston Demet. Hey, Preston, you still there, my friend? Hey, Preston. I'm here. Sorry. Oh, okay, that's no problem. Anyway, James, are you still here? I'm still here, my man. Yeah, I was just saying, you know, it seemed like it, the technology on the bombers, you know, and the stealth fighters just took a big jump. You know, it, it, it with, if you look at what we had before, I, you know, when you think of bombers, right, you think of, of a B-52, which goes back in the 50s technology you know which have been upgraded and upgraded but they're still old obsolete uh, flying craft and all of a sudden you started seeing some of these planes that uh, have come out and then they only flew for a few years and then they were you know replaced with something more you know spacey looking and you know some of the late stuff you know like the stealth bomber and stuff you see stuff like that and i'll tell you it looks alien uh right from the get-go yeah, and I, I actually, I've said it many times, I think the um, black triangles that we've been seeing for 20, 30 years are some of our secret ops, uh, new technology planes. Hey, Preston, what do you think? Um, yeah, I think some of them are. I've been told this a number of times from various people that 10%, 20% of the UFOs people think are alien are not. Uh, I heard some speculation that that famous sighting over Illinois by those police officers uh, was, in fact, one of ours. I don't know if that's true. As far as, like, area, or I mean, I'm 
sorry, uh, the Phoenix Lights. You know, I don't think that one was ours. Um, just from the way Luke Air Force Base reacted and what we know how how they reacted by you know scrambling planes and uh, releasing contradictory statements about what happened. They said that they didn't receive any phone calls uh, from people reporting this. We found out later that a number of people did, in fact, call Luke Air Force Base. And some Luke Air Force Base insiders were like, said, oh, yeah, we had no idea what this thing was. Uh, so it's difficult, I think, especially for you know the UFO witness to look at these things, much less even a military person. Because uh, I've interviewed a lot of military personnel, and they're like, no, what, what I saw... You know, I don't know anything about it. Um, could, still could be military. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I was going to say one thing. You know, like a lot of people come up with all these theories how a- aliens and UFOs couldn't get to our planet, that it would take so long. But, you know, it wasn't what, maybe four or five months ago they actually saw something coming out of our black hole in our own galaxy. It, they Up to then they said... Whatever goes into a black hole is going to be all tore apart. It's going to be nothing, and nothing comes out except, you know, particles and stuff. But no, an object actually come floating out of the black hole. So maybe that's how they transport from our our, our place to their place. Yeah, well, it yeah. appears that they do have some sort of interdimensional travel. Yeah. They definitely got to have some kind of something besides rocket power, that's for sure. And put it like this, if their technology is so good to get here from wherever they're coming from, think how far advanced they are in all aspects of, of life. Yeah, it, I think they're probably much more advanced uh, than we are in a number of different ways, which is not to say that they're necessarily more intelligent or you know, unable to make a mistake. Um, we do have a number of these UFO crashes, uh, which a number of people have asked me. I'm like, if they're so great, you know, how come they're crashing their craft? Uh, so I do think that they make mistakes. Oh, I think so. I mean, if you go back to like even Roswell, Preston, you know, they had some experimental radar they were experimenting with, which back then radar was kind of, you know, really at the beginning of its stage. And, and it was broadcasting the radar on a low frequency so maybe that caused a UFO, you know, at like Roswell and the other location uh, to crash. But, yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking right now, Bob Lazar, you know, I remember hearing him on Art Bell show numerous times. His story never, ever changed then. And it hasn't changed now. And it, it, and it, and it shows what the government did to him by trying to discredit him in every which way and form and that all to me makes logical sense how the government works i totally agree yeah um i've always thought he uh, was a sincere witness and of course you never can tell you do want to get some sort of corroboration and uh, they did finally get corroboration that he worked there uh, and uh, did know some of these people he was talking about so i and the whole Area 51 story is so monumental. And uh, the, way, the way this is going to roll out, I don't know. Uh, but you're, you're right. I mean, people are very sensitive about this subject. Skeptics become very vehement. Uh, science becomes so, almost a rigid system, not allowing new information. And I think that's what we're seeing with this UFO situation, is we have the evidence, we have people who want to talk, we have the money to look into it, but there's this power struggle. And uh, we have the ET technology. There's the whole ET element itself, which seems to be largely orchestrating a lot of this. So I don't know how it's going to roll out. Preston, I want to ask you something. Do you think any of the um, billionaires out there, like a private sector, can can um, start their like own investigation, have their own maybe um, uh, get a crashed uh, UFO and do their own back engineering and do their own thing. You think that's what it's going to take for us to finally ever find something, or you think he would keep it to himself too? Um, I, yes, to both. <laughs> um, you know, it's, I'm, it's my understanding if you, that a lot of the Earth's treasures are not necessarily in military hands or in museums; they're in private hands. A, a lot of the wealth and a lot of I'm gonna. You know, include UFO hardware in there. 
because uh, we're dealing with an element of humanity, you know, these one percenters, you might call them, or uh, people who are, you know, conspiracy. There's a conspiracy, of course. There's a very small element of humanity controlling most of the world, and I think we're seeing that, uh, evidence of that. And this is what the whole UFO situation becomes so important. Because, yeah, I do think that this, this stuff is in private hands. Um, gosh, what's the guy that name who just bought the... Uh, Bigelow? Ranch up Utah? Yeah, Bigelow. So that, there's a good example. I'm sure he's taking this thing by the horns and trying to get as deep as he can with it. Uh, but how much are we going to hear about it? Well, how much is he going to get his hands into it before all of a sudden he gets threatened by the government one way or another? Or shut down. <laughs> Yeah, Good point. Well, I still think the subject is going to come out, and you can't stop it. It's a tidal wave. Oh, I think it is. But, you know, six months ago, seven months ago, it was really a disclosure. Everybody was talking, it's going to come out in the next couple of weeks, the next couple of weeks. And everybody started doing books and putting stuff out about, you know, disclosure, UFOs. You know, nothing really came out other than the um, uh, Navy saying that they'll really take seriously reports of, you know, unidentified objects. And a couple, you know, people in the Congress and Senate, you know, try to do some investigation. What I find so strange is the Space Force that supposedly has now been created and actually has got a little bit of funding. Uh, it, 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 what what's what is What is it about? Is it to try to cover up what's been going on all these years or what is going on. I'm really confused because you can't get a straight answer naturally from the government. <laughs> no, you're not going to get one there. Right. Well, that's what NASA stands for. Remember, never a straight answer. <laughs> this is why I support the uh, Area 51 movement that's going on right now, uh, because I think it's time that this information comes out. Uh, you can't, use the excuse that humanity is going to panic, like they did at that War of the Worlds broadcast, which was really designed to scare people and cause them to run in fear and panic. It did and a good job of it. Yeah, I mean, people got killed. Uh, it was a big deal. And so it could go down pretty hard on people if there was some sort of super official announcement. Uh, and I think what the government should do if they want to remain in control of the situation and I say the government, you know, kind of in air quotes, uh, loosely, who, who's controlling this, the UFO hardware, um, they're going to have to disclose if they want to remain in control. Because if they wait too long, there will be a panic if a UFO shows up and doesn't go away. Or, you know, someone else is going to do it. Someone else is going to disclose, whether it's the United States or another country. Like Russia? Wouldn't surprise me. I think they would jump the gun, real or China, if you know, and 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 really run with it. I really think they would. Yeah, what I'd well, really like to see is when all these people show up at Area Fifty One, which I've been there, by the way, not inside, but to the little alien. And if you're going there, my advice is bring lots of water and be sure you have a full gas tank because I nearly ran out and I had a three fourths of a tank. I thought, you know, I've got a little economy car, I'll be fine. <laughs> but boy, I was, I was glad when I hit that gas station. Well, it is vast. Well, you know what? I, I got a report from one of my guests that was on my show. She runs a, a group on Facebook. She went to Area 51 last week, and she said that they put laser wire, you know, uh, all around the, the fencing. And then they got snipers everywhere, you know, to intimidate anybody coming on there. My concern, and I'm going to be blunt, Heather Wade, a year and a half ago, maybe a little bit longer before, well, two years ago. Well, about, yeah, two years ago. It was just before Art died. And Art gave, you know, uh, her the reins to do, take over the show. Uh, she started talking about, you know, going on Area 51. And she would take a bullet to prove that aliens are on Area 51. That kind of scared me, to be honest with you, Preston, because there's people out there, you know, listeners you don't know who your listener is. You don't know the state of their mind. And it's scary because two months ago, a guy went on Area 51 and came out in a body bag. And I am scared now that you don't know the mental state of certain people. 
So, again, you know, I remember Kent's 